Hello guys, Cryptograns here. Welcome back to another Unity Anti-Matter Dimensions video. This is episode 11 and today we're going to be working on challenges. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something new, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to my channel if you're new, um, turn on notifications for future live streams and videos, and comment all your feedback, questions, all that good stuff below. Anyways, let's get on with it. Also, don't forget to watch the very end. It really helps the channel grow and the video uh, get exposed to more people. Anyways, so challenges i kind of forgot about this i think i was supposed to do it before infinity because when you start the game you start a challenge one right which is to do a big crunch so that's the one you're currently at and when you infinity for the first time that's pretty much or, or not infinity but big crunch that's pretty much when you complete challenge one so we kind of forgot one of the <laughs> the basic fundamentals <laughs> so let's finally do that so i want this to be kind of a short and sweet video and um I'm also like really tired today. I've had a uh, hockey practice at six in the morning with one hour of sleep and I just took a nap. So I'm really tired. So I'm gonna try to make it not too long. So anyways, I'm gonna create this uh, challenge interface. I will be right back. Okay, so we have our challenge one right here. Also what's weird is that Heavy never really labels which challenge is which, and I mean, like, obviously this is challenge one, two, three, four, I, st I still just like to see challenge one, I don't know, that's just something I like to see, I just, yeah, obviously this is challenge one, this is challenge six, I mean, it's pretty obvious, but I'm, I added challenge one at the top, just because I like it like that, so I made a, a new button, I made a new uh, uh, empty game object here, um, I added the, uh, the exit challenge button, and so far we have challenge one, because this video is going to be challenge one only, just to get the idea of it, because once we get the first one done, the rest of them are pretty easy as well, except we just got to do some of the modifier stuff, so we're just going to start with that. Alright, so let's take a look at the interface real quick. So we have the start button and the completed, right, so it looks like this, and if we start another one, I believe they all turn red. Oh no. Oh. Okay. Since when could you switch challenges? Is this the same warning? Oh, it is. So, okay, that's weird. I didn't know you could switch challenges. That's a bit weird. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess we can do that too. Um, but for now, this button just turns, um, hmm. The thing is that I can't just make this green. Actually, I could. I can make it light green, I guess. Cause, yeah, he has his buttons really weird, where he can change the center of it, and I can't really do that. So, anyways, no no big deal. So, we need to create a new script. So, we're going to create a new empty uh, game object first called Challenge Manager. And remember, this is the normal challenges. I'll probably do separate for separate uh, scripts for infinity challenges and eternity challenges, etc. Alright, create a new script called challenge manager, create an ad. Alright, I am inside my challenge manager and I have added four namespaces to the beginning. Uh, UnityEngine.UI, TM Pro, Break Infinity, and the static Break Infinity Big Double. This is pretty much all we'll need for our challenges. We might need system system.collections.generic, but I'm not sure yet. Um, possibly not. I might use arrays instead for this one. And cause, uh, so if you're curious on why I'm not using prefabs, um, it's because we're only adjusting one thing, right? Just the button. So I, I mean, I could make a challenge start button prefab, but I think that would be, just be kind of silly. I mean, there are only 12 challenges and I'm just gonna, I could just drag them in manually and and do that. I, I just think that's just a little easier to do because we're gonna have to search inside each children because we're gonna have to make like a challenge prefab here with the challenge script and then a challenge start button so basically it's going to look for every single um it's, it's the exact same we do for the achievement right we have our row and then our achievement here right we also have a row script and we also have an achievement script we gotta look through all the rows and if it's a row and it has an achievement inside that which is like one of these right here so it's just I, I just feel like it's unnecessary. Alright, so I'm just going to start with the list of images. Because that's pretty much what it is. And this is only going to be like a very single... um, Just a one index for now. Because we only have one challenge. We're going to call this challenge start buttons. 
okay? And pretty easy. And I also wanted to find two colors here. So I'm just going to copy and paste this one here once it's done importing. Okay, so currently I'm grabbing the values for this green right here. And I'm going to make a new color variable here with the fall with the with this stuff right here. All right, now I'm going to make another variable called uh, complete green. And I'm simply just going to set the green to one just to make it a little brighter and for it to pop. Oh yeah, we actually have to change two things. I forgot. So we got to change the the start text. Um, okay, we actually have another color here. This is gray, so I'm just gonna make this one. Uh, let's let's snatch that real quick. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, it looks like that. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna grab this color too and make another gray variable. All right, and we also need a new array for our TMP text. All right, we'll call that challenge start text, and we need a. Um, I think we need a start method because of our like initiation with the arrays and stuff we're gonna do for our or our list for our challenge completions and we also need a public void update method okay um alrighty all right so this is gonna work pretty much the exact same way as the achievements and the infinity upgrades we're gonna look we're gonna create a list you know, at the start we're gonna set a temporary variable to the count, and if there's an error, such as like a null reference or index out or like it doesn't exist pretty much, and then we will catch it and create a new list like that. So let's head to our data class and let's do that. Okay, so we are currently in our data. Let's uh, create a new region called challenges. And in here we're gonna create, um, we're just gonna create one list Okay, yeah, we're gonna create one list. Actually, we're gonna, yeah, one list. That's fine. And it'll be a bool list to determine how many times we completed this one. Now, when it comes to uh, is it eternity, yeah, eternity challenges where we can complete them multiple times, we won't be using a bool list anymore. Okay, so uh, what am I doing? This is called challenge completed. Okay, now in our constructor, we're going to be doing the exact same thing. We're going to do create list, uh, type bool, and it's going to be a size 12. We got 12 challenges, right? Yeah, we got 12 challenges. Okay, and we're good here. Oh, yeah, we also need a current challenge state so we can um, load, uh, save and load what challenge we're in. So we're just going to create an int, actually. Int, yeah, we're going to create an int current challenge okay and this will determine so negative one or actually we'll set to zero so if it's zero then we're not in any challenge but if we're in uh challenge one which is by default um then we're gonna do all the challenge one stuff which is nothing okay so i'm also in the constructor i'm gonna set current challenge to one because at the start you start with challenge one active you just don't see it all right, so back in our challenge manager, we're going to create a try catch. And ignore that. Okay, so now we're going to set our um oh yeah, we need our, we might need our our game uh our game object. Um so at the start, we're going to do var data equals game.data. And then in the try, we're going to call we're going to make a temporary variable that we're going to do absolutely nothing with and call data and challenge is completed. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, dot count. We want to return the count. Okay. And if we get an error, then we're going to recreate it in here. So we basically just grab this right here from the data and replace it with the following uh, proper variables. Oh yeah, we also have to do capital data because it's static. It's a static method. Same thing as achievements. Okay. So if it's a if we get an error, then we just recreate this list and problem solved. All right, so let's do some of the interface now. So let's create a data uh, variable here a var data equals get game dot data and a for loop var i is equal to zero and semicolon i is less than now instead of just putting twelve, we only have one challenge, so we're just gonna start with one. But however, I don't really want to change that every time we add a new challenge. So I'm just going to do challenge start buttons dot count. Okay. And we will adjust this once or dot length. And we'll adjust this once we keep adding more. 
Okay. And I'll put I plus plus. Now you could either do the start text or the start buttons, doesn't really matter. Okay, and now we're just going to access the we're gonna access the color. So just challenge start buttons at index i dot color is equal to uh, now we have three different colors, so we need to determine if it's running or not. So what we're gonna do is uh, if we're gonna create a question mark operator. So data dot challenge uh, current challenge. Now we're gonna see if it's equal to i plus one because we're running the for loop as index zero, but our challenges are gonna be in index one. So we start from one. While for the for loop we start at zero, and that's how it goes for arrays. So we're going to see if the current challenge, oh, sorry, I meant minus one, sorry. So let's see, the current challenge is minus one, I minus one, okay? So let's say we start at zero, and our current challenge is one, okay? So we need to do, um, no, I was right, it's I plus one. So zero plus one, that's one. So if the current challenge is one, and I is zero, because we add it by one, then the challenge is currently being run. So we're going to set this color to run in gray. Okay? Otherwise, we need to determine whether if it's incomplete or complete. Okay? So we can do that by doing data dot challenge completed at index i dot oh yeah. And then we'll have another question mark operator. And if it's been completed, then we're going to set it to complete green. Okay, otherwise we're going to set it to incomplete green. And we don't need to put parentheses around it, but if you want to just stay organized like that, then you then you can, just whatever you want, like that. Alrighty, and we're done with that. And it's exactly the same thing for our text, so we're just going to copy and paste this, because it's really the same format. Uh, just replace the start button with the start text, and we, we are accessing the text instead. Okay, so now instead of running gray, complete green, incomplete green, we need to change these to strings. So we have running. So if the challenge is the current challenge is the one that's selected, then we're gonna do running. We're gonna set it as running. Otherwise, if it's completed, then we're gonna display completed. And if it's not, then we're gonna display start. And once again, very easy. Same uh, structure as that. Okay, so now we need to actually like start the challenge. So we're going to create an empty void method called start challenge, and it's going to take in uh, an integer, so int id, and we're going to do we're going to check some things. So we want to make sure to not start a challenge that's already been completed, and one that's not running. Oh wait, can you actually restart? Hold on, that's 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 weird. Wait. That's stupid. Heavy. Why would you do that? Why would you allow that? <laughs> um, well, I'm going to block it off. Unless there's a valid reason, like uh, restarting the challenge. Uh, I don't want to risk that. Yeah, I don't see why there's why you can switch. So you can switch. That's reasonable. But why why, the, why restart when clicking on it when you can just do exit and then start? Like That just seems like a little safety precaution. Because you know, someone could just click on this without co uh, confirmations on. And then accidentally start it. But anyways, we're just gonna we're just gonna prevent that. All right, so we're gonna do that by basically checking to see if id is equal to data dot. Oh yeah, we need to create that variable, that data variable. Var data equals game dot data. So if data dot current challenge. So if id is equal to data dot current challenge, then we're just gonna return it. Okay, we don't want to switch it, right? But we also want to see if it's active. Okay, because we want to end this current one. So let me think how we're going to do that. Okay, actually, I don't think we need to check for any of them because it's we're basically just performing the same thing. We're just doing a challenge reset and an infinity. We're basically just doing an infinity just without gaining anything. Um, actually, I want to see. Do we get... Um, I think we do. I'm trying to see if we start a challenge, do we get infinity points if we can? Oh, we don't have break infinity, so that kind of doesn't matter. Okay, yeah, we're just gonna do an infinity without gaining anything. <laughs> All right, so in our bit crunch reset, I'm basically just going to uh, let's see, when do we actually call this? Only that. Okay. Well, um, where is it? Inf oh, and infinity points is right here. Oh, that's good then. Okay, so we're basically just gonna call the bit crunch reset in our challenges. So that kind of just saves us a lot of typing or copy and pasting. 
And simply all you need to do is just set the, the current challenge equal to ID. And we need to call the big crunch reset, which is in our infinity manager. And honestly, that's in game, so I don't want to create a whole new object just to access it once. So I can just do game dot infinity manager. Oh wait, is it actually in there? Maybe. Okay, where is our infinity manager being accessed? Nowhere, I guess. So I guess we're gonna have to. <laughs> so at the top, add your infinity manager. Uh, infinity manager. Infinity manager. Okay, and down here. We're going to do infinity manager dot big crunch. Yes. And that basically just starts the challenge without giving us any um, infinity points, which is nice. I, I'm smart that I actually put the infinity points in the in this right here instead of adding it to the big crunch reset method. Cool. All right. So now we have a start challenge, but we need to determine when to complete a challenge. OK, so we're going to do this in our update method as well. And just like the achievements right here, we're going to create here. Actually, let's grab this achievement manager here. We're going to be doing the exact same thing as like the unlock achievement, right? OK, so we're going to create a new method called complete cheat uh, challenge challenge uh, int ID. And we're going to be doing the exact same thing. Uh, let's see. So basically, we just set the, the complete to true and just return the user interface. Um, that's also another thing. I could just uh, update this UI less, op less often. So I might change this uh, in the meantime as well. So in our complete challenge method, all we got to do is set game.data.challenge completed at index ID is equal to true. And that's it. It's <laughs> very easy. We also, I'm going to, I'm not going to convert this into an expression body like this because we will probably add our update UI here. So we're going to do that. And now we need to check for our challenge completion. So for the first challenge, or we're just going to start with the first challenge only, we look for reach infinity for the first time. And I believe that's the same thing for all of them. By buying a dimension automatically erases all lower tier. Yeah, so basically all of them are just big, reach big crunch, and that's it. Okay? That's, that's pretty easy. Um, also, now that I actually think about it, the challenge... Uh, does the challenge end after? I'm trying to think. When do we actually end the challenge? Maybe it's in Big Crunch Reset. Mm, I don't know. Let's just do it in here and we can experiment with that. All right. So if, ooh, <laughs> I don't know what that was. So if data dot antimatter is greater than or equal than double dot max value. And, oh, so we're going to check three things. We're going to check the antimatter. The, cur the current challenge, make sure it's equal to 1. And we need to check to see if we've already completed the challenge. So we need to, uh, well, we don't need to create a new method new method like we did already. Like, um, Yeah, we just, never mind. Um, we also need to do uh, data like to, uh, challenge completed at index 0. And we want to make sure it's false, so we add the exclamation mark at the beginning. Otherwise, if all this is true, then we do complete challenge at an, uh, uh, ID is zero. Okay, so that's our argument, zero. And that's it. We pretty much do the exact same thing for all of them. This might, I'm going to have to, like, as we add more, this might just become an update challenge checker. Where, because this is pretty much like, we just look for the current challenge, right? And then, yeah, because none of these challenges have a, a smaller requirement for what I, from what I remember and from what I can see. It's all big crunch, so I really don't think we needed to check for this 12 times. And, yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to think. Does it, So we have, like, you are currently in a challenge, I think, right? No? Mm, I thought at the top it said you are currently in challenge. Maybe that's NG plus 3. I'm not sure. But I think we're done. Oh, wait. Canceling challenges. Yeah. I want to do a cancel challenge real quick. And that's actually... It's in the same method. I was about to start um, writing something. So I'm going to change this method called toggle challenge. Because we're basically just going to toggle between challenges. And... Oh, so instead of 
returning if the current one is... Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's exit challenge. Never mind. Never mind. I have that right. <laughs> I thought clicking on this would exit, but I forgot that I was like, heavy, why would you be able to restart without exiting? I don't know. So anyways, let's just make that cancel challenge method at int. Actually, no, not even int id. And we're pretty much just going to set the current challenge equal to zero. That's that's literally it. And we're going to update the interface. Mm, yeah, game.data. Yep, like that. So are there are three cases where we can update the UI. Starting a challenge, canceling a challenge, completing a challenge. Oh yeah, fourth. Starting. Like you're st like the very start of the game. So I'm just going to make a method for this. Uh, public void update challenge UI. And we don't need to split this up like we did in the achievements where we did rows and individual achievements, right? We just kind of separate it like this. All right, and now we need, but now we can call this update challenge UI at the very end of each of these methods. Start, start challenge, cancel challenge, and complete challenge. Cool. And now we can test. All right, so don't forget to apply your buttons here. So the start button is going to have access to the challenge manager. And we are going to uh, do start challenge. That's our method. And we're going to select ideas one. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that's right. Okay, now our challenge manager, we need to drag in our game controller, our infinity manager, and our start buttons. So we only have one right now, so I'm just gonna set the index, I'm just gonna set the size to one. But once again, we will expand once we have more challenges. One more thing I forgot to do is the actual interface for um, challenge. Okay, so what we need to do is add a canvas for our challenges. Public canvas challenge canvas. Okay, and we're gonna go back to the bottom and add this to our navigate method. So challenge, yeah, challenge canvas dot game object dot set active false. And in here, we're just gonna add a uh, copy and paste this and replace the the case with uh, challenge challenges, and just replace this infinity canvas with challenge canvas. All right, so now we can switch between challenges and all the other stuff. Okay, so in our game controller, we need to drag our challenge canvas right here. And I'm just going to test this by closing all the other stuff. And let's give it a run. Also, don't forget to save. I forgot to save. It's very crucial. All right, we already have a null reference. What's wrong? Mm, challenge start buttons. It might be this length here. Oh, wait. Huh? <laughs> uh, what's wrong here? This object is not set. What is it talking about, though? I'm guessing it's the challenge completed, but I, that doesn't make any sense, though. Let's see. Let's flip the, t the start text on the button and see if it does that. So, yeah, I'm going to experiment until I figure this out. All right, I think I see the issue here. So, it is related to the challenge completed, but I think it's because of the start method. Um, we don't have to do this in a... No, this doesn't happen in achievements because we have a start achievements method. So let's create, um, let's replace this with a start challenges. I kind of always forgot that I got to do that. And now we bring this into our game controller. And we also have to add our cha uh, challenge manager at the top. Challenge manager. Okay. And our start method right under the achievements or right under this data equals saves this, uh, this loading part right here. We do uh, ch challenge manager dot challenge manager. Wow, I, can, I don't even know why I could. <laughs> uh, challenge manager dot start challenges. Okay. And it should fix all of our issues. I think that that happens because when we, unfortunately, and we're just kind of unlucky with this, it runs start before we even get to this right here. So it does all of this before we even load the data, just somehow, okay? I'm guessing it's just like an order thing. Uh, like challenge manager comes before game controller just because of 
alphabetical order, and that's just how Unity manage it. I don't know. And that's my guess. Oh, we're still getting no reference. Ah, oh, right. We forgot to add our challenge manager to our game controller. <laughs> Duh. All right, so it looks like we're safe now. So we can finally, oh. So it looks like challenge is still um, toggles infinity instead. So don't forget to change this label from uh, infinity to challenges in the challenge button. Cool, so we can now um, start. Uh, we also forgot to apply this exit button, but it, um, no big deal right now. Uh, I'm just gonna temporarily set that. Actually, let's do that outside. All right, so exit challenge, we'll set that to exit challenge. Exit, where is it? Is it cancel challenge? Cancel challenge, one of the, whatever I called it. All right, the game seems kind of broken right now, doesn't it? Or is it because of the upgrades? I don't know, but the game seems like, ooh paused okay never mind i guess it's not all right so currently we are not in challenge one just because of that's just not how it worked so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna start it and then i'm gonna uh delete the save from the file location and then see if it starts as challenge one so let's start as challenge one or, oh oh <laughs> oh okay that's interesting okay so we why is the alpha one Okay, I'm not really sure why the alpha is set to zero. So I guess I'm just going to set all of these to one. I'm not really sure why that's happening, honestly. But it does say running, so at least we're starting challenge one. But now let's let's give ourselves infinity. Wherever our data is. Okay, yeah, let's give ourselves infinity real quick. And do a big crunch. Ah, oh, so this says we're running in challenge one. Is that true? current challenge one so it looks like that the it didn't work <sighs> okay well we gotta fix that oh i just realized that i accidentally put <laughs> stupid me i accidentally put the challenge completion stuff inside um the challenge ui instead that's that so <laughs> okay that's my fault all right so now it should properly work All right, so such a, yep, we're, oh, why is that button still dark? I don't understand. Why? Uh, um, okay, I don't know why it's doing that. That's a little weird. If I, if I complete this challenge, I bet it's going to go back. Ready? Let's just see. Let's just see this. Oh, man. It does, but we didn't even complete the challenge. Well, that's not good. Um. All right, so my guess is that for some reason the color is just not initial initializing. Uh, at the start, even though oh, this running gray. Okay, why is running gray like that? That's weird. I'm just guessing because we created this variable and we loaded it and all that stuff, and then it just didn't save all this stuff. So. Like the usual painful stuff, you gotta do this in the start method. Unfortunately, that's just how it is. I don't know. It's this fixes itself on compile when you compile. So like build for, like build for your project. I believe that's my guess. It's because it just doesn't auto compile, um, old stuff. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really sure why it does that, but it's a really weird issue. But I guess that solves that issue because if we set that to alpha one, it would fix it. Now the next issue is why is challenge completion uh, this not working? All right, so a good way to check for this is to do print and just copy and paste all three of these statements and f and see if they're all true. And if it is, then it's related to our uh, complete challenge method. If it's not, then it's related to our if statements. Something related to the current challenge itself and maybe this too. Okay, so it looks like we fixed this right here. Um, so, yeah, okay, good. So, false, true, false. So, f what's false? Um, yeah, so that's, that's right. So, this is false. It says that challenge zero is already completed, right? That's what it looks like. Um, this might be an actual previous issue. Where is our challenge completed? Right here. So, it says it's already completed, it looks like. <laughs> okay, so let me try that again. Um, honestly, I should just get rid of that requirement here because, I mean, we're not going to be checking for it anyway since we're not going to be going back to current challenge one. 
So, I, well, okay, let's just try this. Ah, it still says it's running. Okay, why? Okay, so it's got to be this right here. Okay, and also, I think we forgot to exit this challenge when we complete it. So I think that's also another part of the issue, is that we have to um, set current challenge equal to zero. That, so we don't have to actually reset anything. We just got to set this current challenge to zero. So it doesn't do that. What I could probably do is for loop it. Actually, no, that's a little bit, that's a bit um, much work that we don't need to do. Okay, so now we should be able to complete this. Cool, so now it says completed. Okay, so uh, have I tested the exit challenge yet? Oh, I cancel challenge. So now, okay, so I guess we're running it again. So that's the issue. We're not, it keeps running the previous challenge. But I guess this is a good chance to test our exit challenge. Cool, that works just as fine. Um, so our start challenge, we want to also make sure ID, um, oh yeah, we want to do data.challenge completed right here. So if data.challenge completed at index ID is true, then we're going to return it. We don't want to restart a challenge that we've already completed. Okay, so now we know all that stuff works. Um, I wanted to test one thing. Right, I wanted to test to see if uh, full resetting works. And they're not really full resetting, but um, deleting all the save stuff and seeing if we start... Oh. I don't even know what that was. Okay. Um, but I want to see if it works where we can just start with challenge one. Okay, cool. We start with challenge one running. And now if we... Where is my data? Right here. And now if we big crunch for challenges and we complete it. Nice. Very really nice. We just need to do the auto buyers next after all the challenges, and yeah, we should be good to go. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video and if you learned something new, make sure you please smash the like button, comment something below, comment whatever you'd like, subscribe to my channel if you're new, and turn on uh, notification for future videos and live streams. If you watched the entire video, you are a hero, and I love you very much. Thank you guys for the support lately. I know I've been an inact not as active, but I've been trying. I've been trying to make videos as much as I can. And yeah, I've been very busy with crypto clickers and other stuff. Anyways, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.